there's this really interesting article courtesy of NPR that I want to talk about regarding um, Berlin's fame nightclubs losing customers in the face of an uncertain future. And it also makes me think about this thread I've been reading recently on the Bergheim community subreddit where somebody was mentioning how they think the vibe of the dance floor has changed a lot post pandemic because of the price increase and you're seeing different people on the dance floor like the makeup of the dance floor has sort of changed um um just the vibe of people and what not what they look like where they're from it's completely changed and altered the vibe of the spaces so no matter you know the door picking stuff doesn't really matter when only a certain group of people can afford to go to a club or certain people from certain different backgrounds or whatever it may be so that kind of permanently affects the way the vibe is in the clubs and stuff which is really unfortunate fortunate and it's interesting because in berlin it seems like that's become a thing but i feel like in london it's a bit different i feel like in london it's been a lot of people who have moved on from clubbing it's not that the clubs are expensive because they've always been expensive it's people just have kind of grown up or grown out of it for the most part because i feel like there was a contingent of people a, there was a small group of people who during the lockdowns nothing changed they were putting on warehouse raves and partying and, and doing whatever they were doing and i feel like a lot of those people um basically are the ones now who are weirdly enough holding the scene together still because they're still the diehard ravers those diehard ravers are the ones that were again partying during the peak of the pandemic didn't give a fuck they were out there putting on events and now that no one is really out anymore they're sort of ones turning up week in week in after week um still excited about the same people same parties same lineups for the most part same clubs but they are the ones weirdly enough holding it together and if anything offering up interesting different ways of approaching raves and parties and all this malarkey and promotion and marketing blah 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 so it's an interesting kind of flip you know like i said in berlin it seems like it's an economic thing in london i think it seems like an adult um you know lifestyle choice thing type of thing that people are doing a little bit they're like hey you know what i'm off of this and because yeah just to end that point so the pandemic people kept raving but then a group of people who saw what was happening and just reacted to it and said you know what i'd rather start a family now i'd rather downscale i'd rather move out in london whatever it may be change different pace whatever i know a few of my friends on the scene who did that who moved to other places to kind of just you know um you know de-relegate deregulate themselves a little bit and not be on this constant rat race grind type of thing especially since you know one of the good things only good thing to come out of lockdown was the fact that we now can all work from home so or that's now become like an allowed thing because before it wasn't really a thing that was really um permitted in most workplaces it was something that was kind of given as a bit of a treat um if you performed well whatever maybe or just reserved for the upper management but now that's become a thing you got people that are basically taking their london salaries and moving to fucking manchester and shit which is fucking awesome so you know when you move over there yes they've got clubbing scene as well but it's not as maybe as crazy as ours so you can maybe afford to kind of you know ch chill out a little bit and calm your horses a bit so i'm interested to see what the different vibe is on here so it's courtesy of um, npr um let's read the article here for those who haven't experienced it a night out in berlin can be reduced to a math equation whose first variable is the best club you've been to the quote Berlin's nightlife is, let's say, what you've experienced. Multiply that by 10, says Zach, whatever his surname is, often known as Devious One. Oh, is that his name? Okay, I forgot. Zach. Okay, I, I didn't know Zach, that was, his, that was his surname. So I guess he's Polish or something, right? Um, or something along those kind of lines, um, Eastern European or Central European. Anyway, it continues. Berlin nightlife is very free, he says. It's trying to push artistic boundaries. It's trying to push personal boundaries. It's trying to let people know, um, sorry, let people experience music, art, culture with some rules. But those rules are created to have no rules, which is very true, right? Once you get past the fucking picky, um, you know, um, what you call it, pretentious, uh door picking selection and you go inside you realize okay soon after like very rare do you hear people say i got past the door picking and i was, I was like oh it's overrated no usually it's like oh i get it now i get why you make such a fuss about letting certain type of people in and certain people not in because the vibe is in that immaculate like i've still yet to see one person fighting on a dance floor in berlin ever and again i've, I've been there i don't i haven't lived there but i've been there enough to have a big sample size i've not seen one fight um it continues, Devious One, who holds a residency at Berlin Club Berghain, says he's heard complaints lately from club owners and promoters in Berlin about the declining numbers of club goers. Even Berghain, typically an, an anomaly because it draws crowds from around the world, has raised its cover charges to deal with the rising cost. He thinks fewer Europeans are making quick clubbing trips to Europe to, um, to the city due to financial hit on the pandemic. I agree with that. 
I think a lot of it as well has to do with the fucking accommodation. The accommodation in Berlin now is so expensive, bro. Like, unless you want to live in somebody's house and live in their fucking private room um, on an Airbnb, if you want to try and get your own apartment um, or even your own hotel room, they're extremely pricey. And again, I'm at the age now where I'm not really into fucking, you know, staying in a hostel with 10 people and stuff in one shared room. So if you if, you, if that's not an option, because hostels are still there, which are fairly cheap, but if you don't want to go to a hostel, most hotels for a weekend trip, you're looking at 300 euros plus, maybe the same, if not more on Airbnb, if you're looking for a private apartment. So it's really, really expensive now. Before it was like half of that, it was like 150 for like a Europe, for like a one, for like a one weekend trip. And I mean, a weekend trip, maybe even for like from like Friday to fucking Monday morning. Um, That's like a weekend, you know, you, go over there. you could easily get one for like 150 euros. Now it's like double, if not more than that. So that makes it far harder to go if you're an experienced quote unquote clubber and shit. It continues, um, the quote, so where a casual weekend to Berlin before the pandemic was a simple decision and paying the cover and eating food and taking taxis and then getting home before you have to go to work on Monday was really easy to do in Europe. Um, I think it became harder to pandemic. Home should agree. And that's something I realized too when I went last. Um, I wasn't club hopping as much. I thought I would be, but I didn't end up club hopping as much. I went to a couple clubs, but I didn't go to all the clubs I was going to go to. I think in the past I would have because I would have been able to ping around in fucking taxis easily because it's cheap. And I've also been able to go in them because it's cheap too. But most clubs, in Berlin, or in Berlin, sorry, are now the standard kind of London prices now, which is twenty euros, which is basically twenty pounds. Um, but yeah, our clubs are crazy because even twenty pounds isn't isn't enough to get into some places. Some places you have to bring thirty um, to get in, which is crazy. And sometimes that's thirty without even you know putting your jacket in, without getting a drink. So by the time you get your first drink in, you might have already spent a hundred euros fucking wild so it's the same as applying in berlin which i think maybe is probably about 60 50 euros out for the night out so you're it's still a bit tough but i think one thing they do really well they do they're really tight i feel like berliners when they rave so they're very conscious of their spending they don't go willy-nilly spending crazy so if they do go out you know they might pre-drink they might buy some drinks at this fucking spat on the way there um you know stop at every single one before they get to the venue to get a bit licked up maybe sneak a drink in um you know and, and then maybe buy maybe have a budget to buy one or two while they're there and, and then of course a lot of them too don't like to mix alcohol with their drugs they're very you know disciplined with that regard i think more so than us in the uk we're a bit more crazy and that might actually help things and of course a lot of them cycle they might walk back to home they might take public transport all that stuff is relatively cheap if not free if you don't pay for your ticket and shit so maybe there are ways to get around it but i feel like as a tourist for me personally i did really see that my money wasn't going as far as it was before. Like I really was basically spending quite a bit of money to go there. So which is why I'm not going as often before because before the pandemic, I was there was one year I went like four times in one year. Do you know what I mean? Like now I'm just going like once if not twice a year, which is really, really crazy. Um it continues. Berlin Club Commission Chair Lutz the surname says before the pandemic, a third of tourists came to the city's city nightclubs. They typically spent 1.6 billion per year while they were here. Um, in 2021 to 2022, 5.5 million tourists came to Berlin, 30% fewer than the previous pandemic numbers. But declining tourism isn't the only problem. The quote, you have inflation, you have an energy crisis, and you have also the rise of the minimum wage. Um, uh, Lutz, um, whose group represents Berlin's clubs, is founded by them and acts as a lobbying uh, body for them in front of the city's federal government. There's also less demand because fewer people are in the city. People don't spend so much money because of inflation. It's very critical time. It's true. Um, maybe there isn't. I think I noticed that too when I was when I went to the first like Berghain event post pandemic there was a, definitely a decrease in the amount of people there it was not as busy as it always don't get me wrong it's still busy but it's what as busy as it was post pandemic or pre pandemic sorry post pandemic yeah pre pandemic was way busier um all across the board i think it doesn't matter what club you went to it could be in club division there you would have seen it fucking heaving but now at times it's not so much and again they have a lot of options there it's spread you know you can fucking rave all the way um throughout the day and the weekend and whatnot but there's definitely less people around than before um and i hope it's not 
a morbid reason like they all died from fucking covid and shit that'd, that'd be horrible a critical time too because of how berlin is developing as european metropolis the quote i think that in berlin much more in other cities there is a deep connection between nightlife and urban development 100 percent agree with that tobias rap oh he's, he's the author of that book i've got um called lost and sound berlin techno and the easy jet sat and the easy jet set i actually bought it accidentally in german i need to get it again in fucking english it's a legendary book um it kind of was one the, the one the first one that sort of depicted the whole techno tourism thing as well from back in the day um it continues here rap says berlin's club scene is an is is an outgrowth of how the city developed after the fall of the berlin wall and germany's reunification more than three years decades ago in the years <coughs> sorry in the years after the reunification, one third of East Berlin was empty, recalls rap. There was nobody living there. It was a ghost town. So young people like me and others who took spaces, you have empty warehouses and an old factory that is empty and you go in and you squat in and you say, this is ours. And you have this huge space and say, what can I do with this? You make a party. And now it's not so much, isn't it? You, you rarely if ever hear about underground raves. I know they still exist. I know they do. But you don't really hear them happening. I know when I was here and watching stuff from afar, like a fucking voyeur in Berlin, I did see a few of them doing raves just outside of Berlin. There's like these weird like bunker things. I guess they were built around the war um, where people were throwing these illegal raves out. But you don't really hear about a lot of them nowadays as much because I guess it's just too bait in it. You can't really avoid people kind of finding out about your illegal rave because, you know, the people in Berlin look a certain way and if they're all heading in one direction, it's pretty easy to spot where the party's at. It continues here. Berlin's clubs evolved from life on the margins. In the early 1990s, these Berlin nightclubs popped up in the abandoned breweries and power stations. None of this was safe and rap considers this a minor miracle that there wasn't a horrible fire of accidents inside of these makeshift clubs. Eventually, investors in the city began to take note. They worked together to build legal, licensed clubs and other businesses began to arrive the quote the side effect that was that it was good for the value of the properties because in lots of areas that were unrun down they were empty and they were not nice and they didn't need a good reputation you suddenly had galleries bars nightclubs that gave the areas great value and with that came young renters who turned into middle-aged homeowners of children and as housing prices were risen burdens transformed gentrified neighborhoods had become less comfortable with less with the city's clubs and their subculture I still would that's the one part of gentrification that always kind of makes me laugh in it you you specifically move to an area because of the bustling nightlife and then you get there and you complain about the bustling nightlife you want to shut it down it's like huh but anyway um just down the block from berlin's infamous fetish and sex club the Kit Kat club um undine a resident who critical of the club and who only gave her first name for the fear of retribution from club goers and the club owner points out the the distrust of the previous evening okay let's see what they have to say this is from an uh, a person that isn't for clubs i'm curious to hear their perspective they say this as follows you should take a photo of all the trash and the clubbers have left behind she says nobody picks it up nobody cares i've complained several times to the police about the noise and the rowdiness of the early hours of the morning from this club okay that's fair but to be fair that might be an exception because that's one thing i think i've seen i don't really see a lot of there's not a lot of like loitering around clubs in berlin people just <coughs> people just kind of leave <coughs> i feel like or they go to different spots but there's not really it's not as like crazy as it is in london people in london go mad when they're outside of a club it's like they're steaming eager for an excuse to go crazy somewhere else or just making noise for the sake of it so i don't really see that attitude a lot in berlin but it might make sense at like kit kat because kit kat is also a very touristy club even though it's a sex fetish club which is a bit of a niche in itself it's still very touristy right it's kind of one of the most popular clubs there aside from Bergheim. so it makes sense maybe that why they have that kind of a weird um you know behavior from people can place like this are on the rise in berlin as cities housing prices go up and urban spaces become tighter but for zach the dj is clear who should get the free pass the quote who was there first he asked exactly that's my that's my thing too who was there first if the club was there first you can't uh, why can't the club be protected the same way that if apartment building was there first and the club moved in exactly because if the club if the, no, let's continue his quote who was there first if the club was there first why can't the club be protected in the same way that if an apartment building was there first and the club moved in well in this case the club were there first the culture was there first and i think it's important to protect those things first exactly i wish that was the sensible approach to doing things or maybe even just a mediation or something in between but it's never the case it's usually the club is there first 
everyone moves there because of the bustling nightlife cultural art scene whatever it may be but it does involve a lot of fucking activities after 6 p.m but then the people that then move there um you know get annoyed by the fucking noise or the realities of living in a place that's bustling and they then start to put in petitions to close things down and sometimes it goes far as to get the thing closed down and then it's like hey you move to this area to do what then to live in a rundown area with no bustling cultural nightlife scene around there at all is that what you actually wanted interesting so they love to bend to every desire of the residents but don't do it for the fucking clubs that actually are the ones basically increasing the value of that area and bring people there in the first place there should be a way to mediate it whether it's by increasing the amount of soundproofing and whatever it may be whether it's finding them if they have you know and social behavior so it's also understand the club to make sure the patrons are behaving whatever it may be there has to be some level of um cooperation to make it work because at the moment this one-sided affair with gentrification is so annoying it continues the Berlin club commission is in fact seeking the type of protection that the city offers its museums opera houses and other cultural institutions so that it can survive its current and any further turndowns such protection includes city subsidies and tax breaks near midnight on a thursday at berlin's Bergheim club there is no line maybe it's too early maybe the times are tough despite this when andrea Shib shibaja and her friends approach the bouncer he shakes his head directing them the way out <laughs> oh bless them I, I guess it's them right this is the guys that didn't get into Bergen, unfortunately uh, and again look they're all wearing black right they've got the quintessential outfit on so don't think it's a black thing um they're costa rican who live in boston and they flew to berlin because Bergen was on the bucket list i want the people that usually wears black and i feel like oh maybe i'm part of that i want to hang out with people with the same vibe as me Reject is so shaking his head Shabai is still in a state of shock and lingers outside in the cold watching others casually walk inside past the bouncer who just turned her and her friends away when she hears that berlin clubs are complaining about fewer club girls she drops her jaw but at the same time they reject you she says so you're like well that's what's the point i'm coming all the way here for this and then they're turning their back on you i'm just going to spend my money somewhere else but that's the thing that is beautiful about that place right and it's something that's a bit odd they they do that because obviously the vibes are more important on the inside but that kind of selective that 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 ability that is it's a it is a kind of a privilege that they can do that basically that's basically what i'm saying because i think in most cities if you treated your customers the way berlin Berghain does or berlin does in general people just would refuse to go back they don't want to put themselves through that ringer anymore right they would just kind of refuse to go back and that's you kind of basically done but if anything most likely these costa ricans from boston will probably figure out a way to come back again one other time and try to get back in again and it'll become part of their fucking law it become part of their fucking you know topical conversation in their friendship group it become something that they'll have on their bucket list forever until they cross that bad boy off and then even when they do get in it'll probably become a drug that they'll then be unable to not stop themselves taking so it does create a really interesting kind of a relationship between the clubber and the fucking club itself um but you know in any other place that's what makes it beautiful because in any other place if you've got the money you can get in they like, don't really care about the money you know sometimes when it's empty they'll purposely reject people just for the fuck of it that's also kind of funny as well but um it is kind of true what they're saying though i have kind of seen especially in london there's definitely been a change in the makeup of people when you go out it's not the same as it was before before it was a very i would say very it was much more variety in the people much more diverse maybe in terms of backgrounds forget race sexuality and shit just in terms of you know upbringing and background and whatnot just from what you can see from your naked eye it looked way more diverse nowadays you see the same type of person right you see the basically the techno weekend warrior out every single weekend it's not really much more apart from than that except for maybe tourists which is kind of made a bit boring but hey what can we do what 